capital budgeting present future cat future values high cash levels. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. And I'd also refer you to Capital Budgeting 4 for these same concepts. I'm going to flip over to Word and look at what I thought was a very interesting article. This is from USA Today from late July of 2010. Companies hold a record $837 billion in cash yet won't hire workers. I want to go through the gist of this article and relate it to some of the topics we saw in capital budgeting. These companies, large companies, are making money. They've had sharp earnings increases. And the group that we're talking about is the Standard & Poor's 500, which is a basket of the 500 largest stocks in the company, in the country, in terms of capitalization. That's the group we're looking at. So we have a stock index, which is that basket of 500 stocks. The issue is, is that these companies are piling up cash and collecting practically zero interest on the money, hoping there'll be a better time to invest later. But there's a problem. And the problem is, is that we've gone through a recession with heavy cost cutting. And the concern is, is that companies have starved, quote unquote, expansion for so long, focusing merely on cutting costs, that they've run out of ideas on how to become more profitable and they need to raise their what's referred to here as their top line which is their revenue. Reducing costs is a one trick pony says this. Financial advisor you can only hold down headcount so much that is number of employees without hurting the quality of your product. There's some comments in here and you can go to the article about the buildup in cash holding cash amounts to 10% of their total value, which would be their total assets. And what we're getting at is capital expenditures, which is spending money on new facilities and equipment. So they give a level here of investing, and they say it's down percent from a year earlier. They're not using the money for something else other than capital expenditures. In other words, they're not using it to boost the dividend, dividend payments, and they're not using it to buy back their stock. Another thing that they're not doing is they're not using it to acquire other companies. So why aren't they spending the money? Well, one big reason other than the economic uncertainty is they don't want to be caught in a bind when we had the credit markets freezing in late 2007, meaning that banks would not extend credit to corporations, or if they did, it was under very restricted terms. And if you can't borrow from your bank, you don't have enough cash to operate your business. So the result is you keep cash and hoard it, so to speak, so you don't run out of operating cash and have to borrow money. But there's a cost. And the quote here is, getting a low return on cost, the second worst thing companies can do, the worst is to waste the cash. So since cash is an asset, we need to get a rate of return on our assets. And cash obviously offers a low rate of return since we're not tying up that money for very long. Well, the end of the article, once get com companies get more comfortable about the economy's future, the hoarding mentality might ease a bit. I want to use that as a jumping off point to talk about some of the capital expenditure issues we talked about in capital budgeting for. So one, this is the Levi's sewing machine example where we use the cost of a sewing machine to make blue jeans. We talked about cash inflows, the machine's useful life, the rate of inflation, and we have tables that explain how the present and future values are going to work. And one thing we mentioned was if the future value, if the present value of the inflows and outflows is positive, you'd go ahead and purchase that machine. Well, what if the company had an increase in its cost of funds so that because of the cost of borrowing, the cost of buying the machine was $11,000 as opposed to $10,000. What we see with the cash inflows and outflows at these present values 
is that the sum total of the inflows and outflows is now negative, which means that we didn't, we wouldn't take on the project. Specifically, we wouldn't buy the equipment because the borrowing costs have increased our outflow. So that's an issue that can happen in a difficult economy, higher cost of borrowing. And the second one, we're making some assumptions about cash inflows, and those cash inflows are based on sales, revenue, and profit. Well, what if because of a bad economy there's lower sales, which means lower cash inflow? You can see in this example, the same one as before, the sums of the inflows and outflows is a positive 152. Not much of a positive result, but a little bit. Well, what if I, in year two, determined that the inflows, because of a bad economy, were only going to be 1,500, and in year three, only 1,200? What we see is, is that the in year two and three, the present value of those flows go down. We end up in a negative position when we do the present value of our inflows and outflows. And since it's negative, we would not make the purchase. So a second problem is, in a bad economy, we have lower sales and lower cash inflows. The last one might be, maybe because we're cash strapped, we buy a machine that's less efficient than we could have bought for more money. So maybe the $10,000 gets a machine that's less efficient, which means it makes fewer pieces of clothing and creates less revenue. So same issue as before, if because the machines of lower quality were only getting $1,700 in your one, and we change that on down, because the machine simply isn't as productive, the cash flows in the future years decrease. The sum total of all the cash flows is now negative. And when I sum the present value of the inflows and outflows, and since it's negative, I would not make the purchase. So three things that can be affected by a bad economy. First of all, the high cost of borrowing, higher cost of funds. Second, the inflows are lower because of lower sales. There's simply less demand in a bad economy. And the third one is that because we're in a bad economy, we can't afford or don't want to spend the money to get the real efficient machine. Maybe the better machine's $15,000. We only want to spend ten, and we find out that because that machine's less efficient, we get lower cash inflows, a lower present value inflows, and again end up in a negative outflow number. Jumping back over to PowerPoint, we talked about that there's an opportunity cost. If you spend money on A, that means that you give up the opportunity to make money in investing in B, choice B. We talked about the present value of not only the initial investment, the check that you write, that's the outflow, but we also look at the cash inflows and we add them up to come up with a net, net of inflows and outflows, what's the present value. If it's positive, we do the project. If it's negative, we don't. That's the end of part five. You'll find our essential courses, which are hour-long sessions recorded in GoToMeeting on all kinds of topics. Contact us for that information. Here's our YouTube channel. There's a complete listing of all of our videos on our website by topic. You can go to the website for that. For one-on-one -on -one tutoring and small group sessions using GoToMeeting.com, you can contact us via the website. Here's our email address and our phone number. And we have the Facebook page on the second page of the PowerPoint if you're interested in Facebook. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.